Sutra. He first ascends to the fourth ground, increasing strength and might. Is born in the third Kamwan's family and never retreats towards Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. His faith cannot be destroyed. He contemplates dramas as impermanent and having no arisal. He contemplates the world's becomings and decaying as produced from karma, birth, death, nirvana, and shatras as equally from karma. Contemplates before and after bounds and contemplates their exhaustion. That is how he cultivates to be born in the Buddha's household. Having obtained this drama, he increases in sympathy and kindness, and with ever increasing diligence, cultivates the four stations of mindfulness. Body, feelings, thoughts, and dramas inside and outside contemplating. Wounds, lingering, and worries in that way are all expelled. Commentary He first ascends to the fourth ground, increasing strength and might. This says, when the Bodhisattva tends towards and enters the fourth ground of blazing wisdom, there is an increase in the Bodhisattva's uh, work in the way, as well as in his wisdom, strength, light, and great mind for the way. He is born in the first common's family and never retreats. When he reaches the fourth ground, he is born in the family of the Buddha and becomes forever and retreating from unsurpassed, proper, and equal right enlightenment. Towards Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, his faith cannot be destroyed. At the position of the fourth ground, the Bodhisattva deeply believes in the Buddha, in the Dharma, and the Sangha. Due to his solid mind of faith, his root of faith could never be destroyed by heavenly demons or those of outside ways. He contemplates dharmas as impermanent and having no arisal. He contemplates all dharmas as being impermanent without any production or arising and without any destruction or end. He contemplates one's becomings and decayings as produced from karma. He contemplates how the entire cycle that was go through of coming into being, drowning, decaying, and disappearing into emptiness is produced from the karma of living beings and birth, death, nirvana, and shatras as equally from karma. Whether there is birth or death or certification or rebirth in a given Buddha land, all of it is due to the existence of karma and the undergoing of retribution. He contemplates before and after bouts and contemplates their exhaustion. He contemplates how the boundary of afterwards cannot be guarded and the boundary of the present cannot be guarded, which is why he is said to be contemplate their exhaustion. That is how he cultivates to be born in the Buddha's household. Through that kind of cultivation, he is born in the lineage of the Buddhas, which means being certified to the position of Buddhahood. Having obtained this dharma, he increases in sympathy and kindness. Once, boss, once born in the Buddha's household, he brings for the mind of great kindness and compassion, the effect of obtaining the great wisdom of the fourth ground, and with every increasing diligence cultivates the four stations of mindfulness. Contemplation of the body as impure, contemplation of feeling as suffering, contemplation of thoughts as impermanent, contemplation of dramas as without a self. Inside, he contemplates the mind and does not see the mind. Outside, he contemplates shapes and does not see shapes. In the distance, he contemplates objects and does not see objects. Worldly greed and worries in that way are all expelled. What worldly people are greedy for, the Bodhisattva has no greed for, and what they worry about does not worry him. He has expelled a worldly person's thoughts of love and desire, and therefore has a kind of samadhi power which enables him not to be turned by outside states. How can one manage to be that way? The first way to apply one's efforts is by contemplating the body as impure. You contemplate how your body has nine orifices which constantly pour out impurities. Your two eyes have eye matter, your two nostrils have snot, your two ears have wax, 
Your mouth has sound viva and them all filthy. In addition to those seven holes, there are the outlets for urine and excrement making nine. Unclean matter is always flowing from them and what is there to love about that? And you contemplate all feelings you experience as suffering and how happiness itself is suffering's cause. You contemplate thoughts as impermanent, each being produced and then passing away, not lasting. You contemplate dramas as without a self. All dramas as they, at their basis are characterized by extinction and cannot be expressed in words. So how could they have a self to them? The Bodhisattva cultivates those dramas of the four stations of mindfulness and expels all greed for the five objects of desire, so it's gone. Sutra, the Bodhisattva cultivates the four writing force conduct. Evil dramas are extinguished and the good increases, increased. The basis of psychic power, the rules of the powers, he all well cultivates. The seven enlightenment shares, the eightfold path are also that way. To rescue living beings, he cultivates those conducts, protected by his basic vows with compassion foremost. He seeks all wisdom and the Buddha countries, and is mindful of the common ten kinds of powers. The four fearlessnesses and the uncommon dramas the most special marks and characteristics, the deep, beautiful sounds. He also seeks the wondrous path, the stations of liberation, along with his great experience, he cultivates these, with view of body as the first, the 62 views of self and what belongs to self of the midlist kinds, of skandhas, realms, locations, or attachment to such, Upon this, the fourth ground, all is left behind. Afflicted types of behavior reproved by the first come one as non-beneficial are completely cut off. What the wise one cultivates is purified karma. To save living beings, there is none not performed. Commentary, the Bodhisattva cultivates the four right efforts conduct within the 37 wings of enlightenment just as were the four stations of mindfulness with the four right efforts, evil dramas are extinguished and the good increased. All evil karma that has not yet arisen, he keeps from arising, and evil karma already produced, he causes to be extinguished. All good karma that has not yet arisen, he causes to arise, and good karma already produced, he causes to increase and grow. Then one as the basis of psychic power, the rules, the powers, the four bases of psychic power, the five rules, the five powers, those he all well cultivates. One further adds the seven enlightenment shares, the eightfold path, the seven body shares, and the eight sagely ways shares, which are also that way. He cultivates them too with diligence. To rescue living beings, he cultivates those conducts. Because he wants to cross over every living being, he cultivates the 37 wings of enlightenment, protected by his basic vows with compassion foremost. This is brought about by the vows he made in the past and also because he makes great kindness and compassion of primary importance. He seeks all wisdom and the Buddha countries and is mindful of the come one's ten kinds of powers. He constantly cultivates and is mindful of the ten powers the, Buddhas, the Buddha has, along with the four fearlessnesses, the eighteen dramas special to a Buddha, the most special marks and characteristics, the deep, beautiful sound. He also seeks the wondrous path the stations of liberation, he cultivates the inconceivable way and achieves dhyana samadhi, along with great expedience. He cultivates these. He acquires the most greatly expedient drama draws with the view of body as the first, the 62 views. He expels the 62 views, starting with the views of a body, views of extremes, views of observances, views of grasping at views, and deviant views of self and what belongs to self of limitless kinds. There are also those of skandhas, realms, locations, 
own attachment to such, own grasping at the five skandhas, the eighteen rooms, or the twelve locations. Upon this, the fourth ground, all is left behind. All of it is emptied. For when one cultivates the dumber doors of the fourth ground, one has to become free from all such dramas of attachment. Afflicted types of behavior were reproved by the third common. Afflictions are what the Buddha said not to have as non-beneficial. Since there are no advantages whatsoever to afflictions, they must be cut off. Therefore, they are completely cut off. What the wise one cultivates is purified karma of the good and pure karma which the third common praised to save living beings. There is none not performed. Because he wants to rescue all beings, there is none he fails to cultivate. Sutra, the Bodhisattva diligently cultivates and never and is never lax or lazy. He right away obtains ten minds, all of them perfected. In intently seeking Buddhahood, he never ties or worries, determined to take off to take office to rescue living beings. Commentary. In his contemplation, the Bodhisattva sacrifices himself for the sake of others, only knowing to benefit living beings and constantly forgetting about himself in his concern for them. You can see that people who cultivate the Bodhisattva path are not the same as ordinary people. What common mortals are greedy for, like and are attached to the Bodhisattva has been great for, does not like, and has no attachment to. Anyone can walk the Bodhisattva way, the only condition being the ability to forget about oneself to benefit others, having no greed for enjoyments or pleasures for oneself. If one can be happy at others' happiness and like it when other people like things, then one is a Bodhisattva. A Bodhisattva would willingly sacrifice his own body and life if that would be of benefit to living beings, and would do what he himself does not want to do if living beings needed him to do it for them. He can do that because he doesn't he see himself as existing. He has no self, but only knows about other living beings. That's why when a Bodhisattva suffers. He doesn't feel that it is suffering, and no matter what difficulties he encounters in his cultivation, he doesn't feel there are difficulties. That's because he wishes to cross over living beings, so they all have、uh, they all leave suffering and attain to bliss and birth and cast off death. So the Bodhisattva delusion they cultivate and is never lax or lazy. He realizes that living beings are all waiting for him to come, teach and transform them to and cross them over. And so, at all times, he is vigorous, both in body and mind. The Bodhisattva, even in his sleep, has work he does, and even teaches living beings in his dreams. You may see the Bodhisattva as simply being asleep, but actually he is sending out hundreds of thousands of millions of transformation bodies to other world systems. To instruct and transform living beings, the Bodhisattva state, therefore, is an inconceivable one that we ordinary common beings are unable to recognize, understand, or know. The Bodhisattva, at all times, it is diligently vigorous and never remiss or indolent, and he right away obtains ten minds, all of them perfected. Due to his constant vigor, he comes to have ten kinds of body minds, all perfected and complete. Intently seeking Buddhahood, he never ties or worries. What the Bodhisattva is seeking is the Buddha way, and his search is unrelenting. There's never a time when he feels tired or worries of it. Because he knows living beings are waiting for him to save them, he is determined to take office to rescue living beings. His hope and wish is that in the future he will be able to accomplish Buddhahood, succeed to the position of anointment of the crown, and take then take office as Dharma King. Afterwards, turning the boat of kindness around and vastly crossing over living beings. For that reason. He never ever rests. 
Sutra, he reveres honored virtuous ones and cultivates their dramas, knows the kindness and is easily instructed and without exasperation. He abandons pride, does not flatter, in mind is tamed and compliant. He increases in vigor and is irreversible. When the Buddha dwells upon this ground of blazing wisdom, his mind is purified and it is never lost. His enlightened understanding is decisive, his guilt increases and grows. The nets of doubts, turbidities he completely leaves behind. This grounds Bodhisattva among people is supreme and has made offerings to the meatless Nayutas of Buddhas. Upon hearing proper drama, he also leaves home and is as indestructible as genuine gold. The Bodhisattva dwelling here and has merit and virtue. Using wisdom and experience, he cultivates the way. In spite of odds of demons, his mind does not retreat the way a wondrous jewel cannot be destroyed. Commentary He reveals honored virtuous ones and cultivates their dramas. The Bodhisattva respects and venerates all Buddhas of the ten directions and three periods of time, honors their merit and virtue, and cultivates all dramas. Therefore, we living beings in turn should respect and revere the Bodhisattva and repay his kindness to us. He knows kindness is easily instructed and without exasperation. The Bodhisattva recognizes the kindness done towards him by greatly virtuous good knowing advisors and wishes, and wishes to repay that kindness by following their teachings while cultivating the way and in his turn showing the same kindness towards other living beings. Whether the living beings are easy to tame or subdue or not, in either case, the Bodhisattva teaches and transforms them and would never abandon a single living being. Even if it's the very worst possible living being, he still vows to teach and transform him to become a Buddha in the future and does so without exasperation. At all times, in all situations, the Bodhisattva treats living beings with an attitude of kindness, compassion, joy, and giving. He would never get angry at any living being. If he had a temper and he flat up, that would be becoming exasperated. But the Bodhisattva employs patience to teach and transform living beings and never gets mad at them. He abandons pride, does not flatter, and in mind is tamed and compliant. The Bodhisattva gets rid of all bright and arrogance, and like we ordinary people who cling to our conceit, always feeling we are number one, the very best, he wants to rid himself of flattery, which is playing up to the rich and looking down on the poor. He has no wish to do that, and his mind is tamed and compliant, very kind and compassionate. He increases in vigor and is irreversible. This Bodhisattva is daily more vigorous in his cultivation of the Bodhisattva way, day by day increasing his diligent cultivation of precepts, samadhi and wisdom, and his eradication of greed, anger and stupidity. He never retreats towards the two vehicles, never retreats to being a common person, and never retreats to future falling into the three evil destinies. He is irreversible in position, thought, and conduct. When the Bodhisattva dwells upon this ground of blazing wisdom, his mind is purified and it is never lost. When he reaches this position, he obtains purified wisdom, which he never loses. That is, he never has any defined thoughts, specifically no thoughts of desire, of lust, and love. He has no mind with regard to states. He doesn't give rise to divide thinking when faced with that type of situation. His enlightened understanding is decisive. His good increases and grows. Since he has no defilements of mind, the great light of his wisdom shines forth. It's true and ultra wisdom, not the worldly knowledge and argumentative intelligence of an average ordinary person. What that true wisdom he can know 
what is meant by right and wrong, what is the way and what is not, what is drama and non-drama. He has the selective drama eye, and so is decisive and not confused by worldly dramas. Every day his good rules increase, which is the ripening of good karma. The net of doubts, turbidities, he completely leaves behind. He has enlightened understanding of recognition of all dharmas which frees him of all doubts as well as all filth. This, this ground's bodhisattva among people is supreme. The bodhisattva on the ground of blazing wisdom is an especially supreme person and he has made offerings to limitless Nayutas of Buddhas in the past. Upon hearing proper drama, he also leaves home. In the drama assemblies of the Buddhas of the Ten Directions, he listens to the proper drama, and after that he leaves the home life, or else does so after hearing and understanding proper drama in the presence of all drama. Speaking drama masters throughout the world systems of the Ten Directions and is as indestructible as genuine gold. His cultivation is like a refining of true gold. All kinds of methods are used to smelt and refine that, define that gold, so not the least admixture is left. The Bodhisattva dwelling here has merit and virtue. On the ground of blazing wisdom, he is replete with limitless meritorious qualities. Using wisdom and experience, he cultivates the way. He walks the Bodhisattva path, employing great wisdom and skillful expedient means. In spite of odds of demons, his mind does not retreat. No impending obstacles, stairs, or demonic tests cause him to change his mind. He does not retreat just the way a wondrous jewel cannot be destroyed. Nothing can crack it, for it is entirely a wondrous jewel. Sutra, telling here, one mostly is a Suyama heaven king has self-mastery of dramas and is re re revered by Mantitus. Jennifer solely teaches flops of beings to expel evil fields, intently seeking Buddha's wisdom and practicing good karma. The Bodhisattva with diligence, also power of vigor, acquires samadhis and so forth, numbering in hundred millions. If he uses power of vows and wisdom to enact them, it exceeds that number by a mouse one cannot know. As it is upon the fourth Bodhisattva ground, the purified, subtle, and wonderful way cultivated is married virtue and interactions of aspiration and wisdom I, for Buddha's disciples, have already proclaimed. Commentary Drawing here, one mostly is a Suyama heaven king. When the Bodhisattva dwells upon the ground of blazing wisdom, he regularly is the king of the Suyama heaven, has self-mastery of dramas, and is revered by Mantitus. His freedom and sovereignty over all dramas causes all the throngs of gods and humans to revere and respect him. He universally teaches flocks of beings to expel evil views. He causes all living beings to rid themselves of demon views and return to proper knowledge and proper views, intently seeking Buddha's wisdom and practicing good karma. He concentrates his mind in one direction, only seeking the wisdom of a Buddha and, and cultivating all good karmic deeds. The Bodhisattva with diligence adds to power of vigor. He is courageously vigorous in his cultivation of all dharmas and acquires samadhis and so forth, numbering in the hundred millions. The proper concentrations and proper receptions are hundreds upon thousands of ten thousands of millions in number. If he uses power of vows and wisdom to enact them, if it's through the vows the Bodhisattva made in the past and the powers he has cultivated, it exceeds that number by a mouse one cannot know. How far it goes beyond that number no one could know. As it is upon the fourth Bodhisattva ground, the purified, subtle and wonderful way cultivated is merit, virtue and interactions of aspiration of wisdom. 
I, for the Buddha's disciples, have already proclaimed I, Vada Treasury Bodhisattva, for all of you disciples of the Buddha, have already described what the drama draws of Bodhisattva cultivates on the fourth ground are like. I have told you about the merit and virtue it has, along with all the aspirations and wisdoms which give mutual assistance. And a fourth ground.